Hey everyone, welcome back. Still sick, but still here. And just hoping to bring some Vivian to y'all. I've been talking about this deck for a little while, and I was like, I gotta put out some gameplay. Um, so I'm not gonna talk too much about it, because I literally had a video up yesterday, two days ago, that discusses the list. But, um, you know, mostly just focusing on two drop creatures that you can just curve out really well with Vivian's passive of uh, the upgrade and having the reach with Mystic and Arcbow for further upgrades. And Mr. Raven's incredibly good right now just in terms of tempo and playing into Liliana. Um, so I think we're just going to jump into it. But uh, one card that I you know, talked with a teammate a little bit more about just to sort of get a sense of how it fits in the list. I, I've used Birds of Paradise to get the Ember upgrade, the plus three plus O. Oh. So basically a one mana three one flyer, not bad. Um, but like for other upgrades, it can be awkward. So you do want to be mindful of that. But Birds also just is a way for the deck to, you know, have a free blocker, right? A cheap blocker. And sometimes being able to have a free block as you set up your board is incredibly important, right? It's sort of how Vivian works, Vivian Arcbow works, right? It's a huge mana sink for you, but if you can get it rolling, it can really help get you ahead. So I think without further ado, let's just hop into Q, see where we can get to. Go. Oh. Still just working through this, uh, this illness, whatever it is. Um, and I was doing some climbing just while I had some time at home. So we're sitting at, uh, 17 right now and, um, definitely been feeling like I'm getting a better sense of how some of these matchups go. Um, and I think Vivian's just definitely takes a little bit of getting used to, but is a planeswalker that I really encourage people who are looking for like a mid range or sort of creature based style to, to give a shot. And this is a really interesting matchup. Um, because I think Domri has ways of going way up over, right? And just, like, playing huge spells. But this version's not running Gaia's Cradle, so I'm curious what that's going to look like. Um, two drop's good. Grudge Match is good. Tracker can help. If we could find another two drop, this hand would be perfect. And there it is. It's magic. No. Really what it is is we have a lot of two drops in the deck, so... Let's see how this goes. So they're on the play. So we'll see if they can pressure us early. If they don't have a one drop, I'll probably just run out just the upgrade. If they do have a one drop here, I might be incentivized to play one of our two drops using our empty mana gem. But yeah, they're running Woodland Hermitage. I think I played against this version earlier. Definitely a lower curve, it looks like, playing cards like Raging Goblin. So I think I'm just going to run out the Tusker here. I don't see a reason to keep taking damage. And I, I was playing this matchup earlier, but I was it was like a mirror match between Domri's because I, I played a little Domri earlier just to see how it's it's still feeling. Um, and I don't really get playing these cheap creatures in the sense that it's not really good into mid range, and I think when you're trading for a little bit of life early. I don't know how much that does for you. So we'll see. Maybe I'll eat my words here. Um, I guess this could be the one mana deal three trap. Okay, it's not. They're just trading to get the damage out. That's fine. Okay. Trying to not subject you all to the my sniffling sounds. Um, it's probably wise to just grudge match this, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. I was thinking about just attacking and dropping this, but just getting a free fight here, attacking for five, seems really, really good. So if I were playing against this deck, I'd be expecting maybe a Gatstaff Shepherd here or the 3-1 Ramper. Interest well, it's really good that we did do that. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> this would have died, and they would have gotten to hit us for three. Alright, got some choices here. Um, 
I don't know if there's going to be an upgrade that allows us to attack pass, but you know what? I kind of... It's either that or play Frill. Adaptive Frill Nick. I think it's close. But I think I'm going to try and get a little bit more value out of this creature. See what we hit here. Okay, Relentless or Armor? Um, I'm just going to take Armor here. I think it's close. But having a creature that can't block is... It's not a liability, but it's definitely a little less powerful, I think, than armor. So they have the choice to either let me eat their creature, right, and play another creature, or take five and try to, you know, have me block. Either way, I think this works out pretty well for us. This Tusker is getting a ton of value. But getting to free grudge match their pure mentor just seems brutal. And if I am playing Domri, I probably would run pure because it's just a very explosive one drop if you can get it to work for you. But into other green decks, it's definitely not going to have as much power. Um, okay, well this is interesting. Here I'm going to elect to take the four just because I think it's likely we can get the um, Tusker passed. But... We'll see. I think I'm going to see what the upgrade is first, and then we'll kind of decide how the rest of our turn can play out. What do you got for me? Flying or sneak? I will take flying. Um, so I think in that case, I'm probably just going to go upgrade Stoneforge Mystic. Actually, I guess I could see if we hit haste here. Nice. Even better, actually. Let's get our free five. Our beefed up mystic. And, okay, interesting. We've got big stats, armor, haste. I think against this sort of matchup, armor does a lot of work, especially when we're looking at the Ufamwall tracker in our hand. So I think let's just go with that for now. Okay. Well, okay, Mongrel. That's pretty good, but. I think so we have a couple options here. Um, I think what we're likely going to do is we're going to armor this and fight this for free with off tracker. So I don't need to block this. We're going to take some damage here, but we're definitely going to end up ahead on board. So we'll go to 13, but they still have to deal with this, which is flying in for five damage each turn. Yeah. I don't think that's going to do it, friends. So let's see what upgrade we get. Sneak. Okay, cool. I'm just going to pop the armor here. Let's get in for our six first. Uh, question is, would I want to trade into this? Probably not. Well. Yeah, probably not. Sometimes I think about, like, would I rather just take the trade and push pressure, but I actually might just want this as a blocker, so. Let's get the free fight. Very efficient turn. Um, let's see what they have here for their sixth drop. Got Mist Raven for next turn, probably. Oh, Stag. That's, yeah, that's good. They trade there. They don't really have a great attack here. Could attack with the boar, though. Oh. A little short cutter. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I'm going to take this trade for sure. <clears throat> I don't love it, but I do want to try and preserve my life total. And now it's looking like we actually might do something else. Ooh. Tarmogoyf. So we could just go 2-2-2. Two, 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 which seems pretty good. I think that's probably the play. Let's go Beast Bonder first. And then we'll play Frillnick. Shampoo plus one plus two. Take plus one plus two. This gets the bonus. Attack in for three. Okay, I'm blocking there. 
And let's play our big beefy Tarmogoyf. It's a pretty nice board here. If they play one more creature, they get a boar. So they could probably have enough creatures here. Yep. It's pretty good. At least we get to block it. They get a free card, but that's probably not going to be enough. Pretty good turn for our lane to go off, too, if we need it. Okay. Well, I'm just going to run out the... Is it, is it eight? Yeah. It's lethal. Lethal with our Mist Raven. Block here, they take eight plus three, eleven. Yeah, I don't really get this build of Dom or of Domri. Like, I guess I'm missing something. Like, I get that it can sort of curve out, maybe pressure with some of the don't block cards, but I think you're just you're putting like bad creatures in your deck, in my opinion, or like weaker creatures, I should say, that yes have a goal, but you're just trading down in power for what I would say is not a huge advantage. But who knows, maybe they're teching these things in, thinking it's going to be better against Liliana and Teferi, which maybe it is. I, I still don't really think so, but you know. They're a mythic player, I'm sure they know how to play the game. I just, I'm struggling to find why that's the build that they're trying to do. So... All right, let's hop right back in. So yeah, I mean, the thing that's cool about Vivian is we had so many options there. And I, I think we played it out well, which was good. Um, you know, the thing that's really interesting is sometimes the upgrades are great for you, sometimes they're not so good. So you really have to kind of like weigh how to best, you know, pressure your opponent on the fly. So, oh wow, Gideon. I have not seen a Gideon deck in goodness knows how long. I really like Gideon. It's one of my favorite just aggro planeswalkers. Great name, Kira, for those who know that movie. Okay, so we're on the play, um, and they're running Moreland Haunt, interesting, and they are going to try to pressure us early. So, Birds of Paradise, not the worst, not the best for this matchup. Arcbow, I think, is a little slow here. I think I'd rather just have a creature. Excellent. It's all coming up Millhouse, as they say. Oath of the Paladin. Yep. Still one of my favorite cards. I think it's such a great linchpin for the uh, aggressive decks. Great. We got a bunch of two drops. That is what we want to see. So we've got a few options here. I think, um, you know, just running out the birds is probably best. And then I, I may want to just use a gem here to then set up my Beast Bonder for next turn. I don't have to, though. But I think against this deck, I want to use my mana to be efficient. Nice. Relentless is a great upgrade for Beast Bonder, too. They could go double one drop here, which would definitely pressure us. So, we'll see. I, I think we're favored. I think generally mid-range decks like Vivian do pretty well against aggro. But, you know, sometimes you have really explosive games as aggro and there's not much your opponent can do um yak is interesting that's probably why they're running moreland haunt because that's pretty synergistic um so yeah i'm just gonna play out beast bonder because plus one plus oh relentless awesome upgrade for this card if they attack i wonder what trap they could be representing either armor or I know there's the survivor's luck or something. Like, if it survives, it gets plus three, plus three. Forget how much that costs. I think it costs one or two. Okay, Caracol, that's fine. Okay, so maybe, maybe they have 
some sort of a trap, who knows. Um, treetop actually might come in handy, but I think I'm just going to go with Frill Neck and an upgrade this turn. Ward is actually not the best, but it's not irrelevant, shall we say. Relentless looks good. Um, or would I rather plus O plus three? It's an interesting decision. I mean, they're going to maybe look to Divine Smite this next turn. I'm actually going to take the plus O plus three. Also, if they're running Paragon of Balance, like, it's kind of a buff for that. So, I'm going to attack here, though, 100%. Like, I want them to trade their creatures so they can't activate Gideon. That's that's definitely, okay, Champion's great. That makes sense. That'll come back bigger, which will be a little bit of a problem. Yeah. I would say against Domri and Gideon, if Domri is running... Gaia's Cradle, you always want to be trying to trade, not hyper-aggressively, but you want to basically say, I, I want to get their creatures off the board. Right? Now they've played this, I want to be able to reduce their ability to Divine Smite, I want to reduce their ability to attack with Gideon. So, it's a, little, a lot of things we can do. Okay, so we've got four mana, no traps to worry about. If we attack, it's a really easy block. Um, so there, we don't really have an attack there. We do have a good block on the Yak, though, which is nice. So I think, let's see what the upgrade is. Or we could play the birds, then upgrade. But I kind of just want to play the Worms Wake with a relevant upgrade. Yeah, reach isn't great. But still making a 5-5 five, five is fine. They can Divine Smite if they've drawn it to kill this. But I'm not going to just give them a free good block here, especially when we have Briarhorn that we could potentially help our Beast Bond or Attack Past. Okay. Yep, they do have it. But well, we get it back at the very least. Probably going to have to take... Actually, we might just chump block with the birds here. That seems reasonable. If they all out attack... Okay. Yep. Yeah, this is a good attack. Um, question is, would I rather take the armor creature off the board or this? I, I guess... I guess this. I think we just want to save some life here. Take five. And they have Divine Smited, so we have to be really mindful of their next spell. So... Okay. Gorge Match is not bad. But I don't know that that's what we want to be doing. And Briarhorn, as much as I love pumping this, not sure that's the right play. But it does seem pretty decent. I mean, the only valid attack we would have is if we want to pump this versus this. This does become six, so maybe that is worth it. Yeah, okay. I think I just want to drop this. Make this a threat. Attack with both. They don't have any traps, so... This is ten damage. Also, maybe setting up a good grunge match off of our six toughness beast bonder next turn. If they draw Aura of Courage and attack, it's going to be a little rough. But I think we have the ability to survive it. Hopefully. Yeah, it makes sense. They have a high life total. They can sacrifice life to keep their creatures on the board. So if they Aura Courage attack, yep. Yeah, that's pretty good. We're going to take some damage here, but we're going to be able to take some of their creatures off the board. Um, Is, yeah. I don't really want to take 11. So I think I am going to have this maybe chump. So we're going to be able to fight this next turn. So 
Let's see. Let's, let's block Gideon. And then let's block here. Block here. Take six. Kill two of their creatures, although we essentially sacrificed one for six life. Which I think is worth it at this point. And they had no champion's grit, so... Not really sure what's going on here. Um, could treetop just to make sure the way is clear. That's probably worth it. So we'll give the treetop an upgrade. Nice. It's a good upgrade. This is 10 plus... Yeah, that's a lot of damage. Okay. Let's have this fight. Pack for 16. <laughs> uh, sure. Yeah, we'll play birds. Just get the free damage in. I don't see them coming back from this board position. This thing having Relentless and becoming a relevant creature again bought us so much tempo. These bonders just like the two drop always to have. And when it, when it, it's harder to kill, this thing can really run away with games. Whether it just sits there getting pumped, and then you give it an upgrade off of uh, Stoneforge Mystic, it's just super hard to, uh, if you don't answer it early, it's it's going to be tough. So, I mean, they can have a couple blockers, but almost all of my creatures are lethal. So I think it's going to be a little tough. We've also got a tracker to fight something off, pick something off if we need. So, I would imagine we're going to win this game. Did we disconnect? Sort of looks like it. It's unfortunate. Okay. Oh. Definitely a tough... Tough matchup for the Gideon deck, for sure. Gideon really excels at, you know, board states where, like, they could just trade aggressively and get to their aura of courage while they're still proccing their Gideon, and you're just sacrificing life, sacrificing life, and then they overwhelm you with their cards being, you know, buffed up. All right, let's see if we can get one more game in here for folks, and we'll close it out. So we had the Little Domri matchup, which went pretty well. We had the Gideon matchup, which went pretty well. So naturally, we'll probably get a matchup that might be tough, which is good, because I want to showcase, you know, how the deck is somewhat versatile, and that's why I like it, you know, picking a deck that plays well against the open field. Okay. Against Liliana. All right, let's, let's see what we can do. I think this matchup is tough if we don't have a Raven at the right time, but... It's good in the sense that we can pressure them early, and this is the kind of these are the kind of cards you need to pressure early. Um, let's see, tracker doesn't do a whole lot, but it's a relevant three drop. It's a four. Um, I'm gonna ship these back. Okay, yeah, Worm's Wake is solid. I mean, Arcbow, not as good maybe in this matchup we'll see we're on the draw which is really important because Liliana getting to start with a mana gem can just be really really punishing um, now I think I am I think I want to run out Tusker this could be the minus two minus two uh, the question is should I wait all right, I'm, I'm going to wait. Just because we get a lot of value off of keeping this mana gem to be able to curve out. Oh. Okay, well, this might be Liliana aggro, which would be very refreshing. Um, in that case, I will just run out Beast Bonder and pass the turn. Now, if they play a zombie and pump this, we're definitely not going to block um, well, 
It helps us, I mean, this gets bigger if we don't block, so there is a consideration to be made for that. Oh, all depends on if we want to play Arcbow or Tusker next turn. I think we don't want this getting bigger, though. So I think this is a, a fine block. So maybe they have the reanimation in it, but it's just not like a main theme. I could definitely see that. We're not Tusker. So next turn, if we have to deal with something, we can slam the Mist Raven because we've saved our gem. But if we don't need to, then we can see what we want to do. We could go Briarhorn on our Trample. We could Worms Wake and look out. Okay, and build Striker for another 2-2. Two, two. They attack here. I don't think I'm going to block. It's, okay. Goliath. Yep, that's something I'm pretty interested in moving out of the way. Um, but I can also make this so it can attack past Goliath and then block Goliath with this. It's just a matter of what I would want to do first. I think I like Mist Raven a little bit more. Because then I can Briar Horn and pump this, potentially, or this. So they can replay their 4 drop, that's fine, but... I think it, it gives us a little bit of time. Might even just go look out into Worm's Wake. Let's we'll see what they do. Get Goliath. Pass. Okay, there's a grudge match. That's interesting. I think the best thing is just pump our flyer. Get in. Pressure their life total. I could have attacked with this, but I think I'd rather use it potentially as a blocker for the Goliath. But we can also just afford to take four here. Okay. I was hoping they didn't have foul, but. Okay. I can live with that. Got the grudge match anyway. Okay, we'll take four here. Okay. Pretty, f pretty clear grudge match. I wonder if I want to Mystic and try and find an upgrade here for either of these. I think I like that. Okay, Relentless isn't bad. I want to pressure their life total. Makes a little bit more sense to go here. We'll block here. That's fine. And then we can block here. Let's say this does feel tough having to fight past, you know, their relentless creatures. Looks like another zombify. Okay, I'm glad they didn't do the stitch trick again. <laughs> that would have been, I think, more problematic for us. Oh, well, they had double reanimate. Okay. Hmm. 
Oh, this is gonna be tough. Now I'm thinking about how we can use Vivian Arcbo to kind of get ourselves ahead. I think at this point I am gonna block. I don't love it, but it takes a blocker off the board at the very least. Get these bonder. He's got double worms wake, which is definitely pretty powerful. We don't have an answer to this. I think I like bow here. If I can do it on this, I can attack past here, but I don't know if that's worth it. Armor, ward, trample. Yeah, it's not great. go two drop two drop here just to have blockers don't have an answer to this yet but hopefully we'll draw one and if I was going to sequence this better I should have played Beast Bonder first but I wanted to see what upgrade we got here hard cast grim grin okay that sucks but it's not the end of the world This is tough. I, I don't really know what's going to help us out of this, but... Okay. I was going to say Mist Raven's probably decent. Obviously, these lookouts have been really bad because we haven't played against a fairy, which might be a reason for me to change it up a little bit. Okay, so bouncing Sitch Drake is pretty decent. And then we can kind of crush in with everything for a huge attack. I think that's got to be the play. Okay, nice. But I guess... What a, what do we want upgraded? This is already going to get pumped when I upgrade, so I guess... We want to spread as much damage as possible. Sneak. Plus, plus one, plus two. So they block here if they want to save the most life, but they're taking 12. Okay. Alright. See what they got. It's a pretty good draw for us to get damage through. Okay. Don't think we can afford to block this because it will steal our creature, so we're going to have to block here. Um... Blocking here for sure. Question is, am I blocking here? I mean, they've got three blockers. We don't really have a great way to deal with it. I think we do that. This is pretty rough. Very close game. Oh, man, these worms wake sitting in our hand is really not helping. Alright, so what happens if we 
Yeah, we can't even afford to play both. Okay, so I think I think we gotta see what we get here. Yeah, this is Earth. Okay, it doesn't doesn't particularly help us. And throwing this at something doesn't do anything for us. Except give him an option to Grim Green our creature. Oh god. Alright, so I guess we'll play Treetop Lookout. And then, what, we block block. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think we're just dead, but... Man, if we if we had drawn the tracker earlier, that actually would have really helped us us put through push through damage. I mean, if they have one removal spell, we're dead. So, okay, well that's fine. Them having two drop here is really brutal. Okay, so if I block this, I get a zombie. So I guess that's the way we're going to do it. Like, I, I keep the, the zombie. But, yeah, I don't think there's... Uh, yeah, I, I don't think there's a lot. I mean, the only thing, I guess, is Stoneforge Mystic to get a certain upgrade, but... Yeah. I don't think that is going to do it. Plus three plus so do we have enough blockers? I mean, we're at three. Might not be dead yet. Not dead yet. <laughs> that's that's the good news. Jeez, took so much concentration that turn. Doesn't help that I'm not not feeling well. This is cool. It's been so long since I played against like a zombie Oleana deck. Oh, that's bad news. I think. Not sure what they would reanimate here, but yep, this makes sense. Let's block here first. Uh, block here. Have to block here to not die. And to try and peel the out, we block here. 
It's Stoneforge Mystic to give the sneak. That's it. That's the win condition. But I think they reanimate something. Oh, it would be exactly. Okay. Stoneforge? Off the top? Stoneforge. 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 Come on. One time. Oh <laughs> no! No, I don't think. I mean, they've got two blockers, right? I don't think there's anything they can draw off this that keeps us alive here. But I guess I'll I'll see. Bring in no no. Alright. GG friends. You got it. Damn. Well played by our opponent. I mean, they had a lot of resilient threats and we only have, you know, certain one for one removal. So uh well played by them. So that's definitely tough. I mean, just having to go through those relentless creatures, like, you can set up the turns like we did, where we attacked through for, like, I think it was 19 damage or something like that. But if they're able to reset back up the board, and you have to play around Grim Grin, right, and, like, if you kill it, it's going to take your creature, it's, it's really, really hard. I think we played to the only outs that we had. So uh, that's it for today, folks. Thanks for bearing with me while I'm not feeling well. Um... I will definitely catch you next time. Thanks for sticking with the channel. Please don't don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And uh, we'll catch you next time with a Teferi video. I promise. I'm bringing it to you this week. Take care.